everybody to Capital Decades 1940s Fashions and Styles. I'm Amanda Graham, the archivist for the Sacramento Room located right up there. This is the second program out of three in our series on the 1940s. Purpose is to explore each decade with engaging programs like this on local history. We've got City Life, this week Fashions and Styles, and next week Motion Pictures. And in addition to the programs, we have some great displays uh, to look at out in the lobby and also in the Sacramento room, both inside and outside. And you'll have plenty of time after the presentation tonight to check those out. Um, tonight, we welcome the Sacramento Art Deco Society for 1940s Fashion Show. Doreen Sinclair, president of the society, will be presenting vintage dresses and accessories modeled by Sacramento Public Library staff and volunteers. And the outfits you are going to see are from the collections of Miss Sinclair and Rhonda Barrett. Hair and makeup have been provided by Paul Mitchell Beauty School. And we're pleased to announce that this year we'll also be recording with several video cameras, so you'll be able to view this after the fact through the library website. One small bit of housekeeping, we have some surveys on your chairs. We love to hear how you hear about our programs, so if you could fill one of those out and stick them in the tray as you leave, that would be much appreciated. So now I'm pleased to hand it over to Doreen. I want to welcome you all to the third year that we've done this. We did the 20s, last year we did the 30s, and today is the 40s. As you probably all know, fashions, the 1940s was the time of World War II, and it certainly had an effect on fashions. The shortages Well, the fabrics and leathers and silks were needed for the uniforms and shoes and that of the soldiers and air and navy, and so they were in short supply. I'm such a novice at this. <laughs> Louder. I'll try. <laughs> While Britain declared war on Germany on September the 1st, 1939, and the USA declared war after the surprise attack of Pearl Harbor by the Japanese on December the 7th, 1941. The war did not end until the surrender of Germany on May the 8th, 1945, and the Japanese on August the 14th, 1945, which was signed on September the 2nd, 1945, exactly five years and one day since the war started. Crucial material needed by the military, such as wool and silk for clothing and blankets, affected the clothing industry. Britain and the USA put restrictions on the amount of material that could be used to make a garment. Hems rose, and the L85 order controlled the number of pleats and trims a garment could have. Men's jackets became shorter, and people started making clothes out of old blankets and sometimes used their husband's suits to convert them into clothing for themselves because they were in the military. Less fabric meant leaner styles. Short and boxy were in. Girdles were out, which was good, as rubber was needed for the war effort. Swimsuits became two pieces to save fabric. The, bikini, the bikini made its debut in 1946, after the war. Shoulder pads emulated the military look, and a plain outfit was often jazzed up with an artificial flower or a brooch. Open-toed shoes with T-straps saved on leather. Wedge heels and platform shoes became popular. Lizard and alligator replaced leather for handbags and shoes. When silk was needed by the military, nylon stockings became a popular choice. In times of shortage, women would tint their legs and simulate a seam by drawing a line up the back of their legs with an eyebrow pencil. I've helped my cousin do that. <laughs> Paris, of course, lost its leadership over the fashion world. The Allies resented the fact that Paris courtier houses were collaborating with the German occupational forces. Superfluous use of fabrics such as dolman sleeves, draped fabric, cuffs, and pocket flaps were used by the Parisians 
while the rest of the world was scrimping. New York emerged as fashion leaders using fabrics not needed by the military, such as cotton denim, gingham, calico, and jersey. Rayon became the fabric of choice. We will see a lot of rayon used in our dresses tonight. One-piece jumpsuits were introduced for women so they could easily be popped on if a warning sounded. They had pockets for papers and valuables. And, um, sorry. Oh, sorry. In, in 1942, women doing war work took to wearing blue jeans, which they had never worn before. They also tucked their hair out of the way with headscarves, and they became a fashion trend. In 1947, Paris once again became the arbiter of high fashion. In February 1947, Christian Dior introduced the new look. The style took the look that had prevailed in wartime and reversed everything about it. Skirts were fuller and longer, and nipped-in waist and rounded shoulders brought back the feminine silhouette. Hats were wide-brimmed. In England at this time, young men created the first independent fashion for men. The jacket was tight-fitting and high-buttoned. The pants were narrow and the ties were skinny. It emulated the look of the Edwardian period. And because of that, they became known as teddy boys. In 1942, the Chicano started a fashion trend for men called the zoot suit. And I would like to introduce Gary, who is wearing a good zoot suit. <laughs> it too reversed what had been worn by men for eons. The jacket was very long, with wide padded shoulders and wide lapels. The African and Italian Americans, I'm sorry. Yeah, like Dior, it too reversed what had been worn by men for eons. The jacket was very long with wide padded shoulders and wide lapels. The pants were high-waisted and wide at the waist, tapering down to the, a tight cuff. A watch with a very long gold chain dangled from the waist to below the knee and looped back up to a side pocket. A color-coordinated white brim fedora was worn with the zoot suit and often had a long feather decorating it. Two-toned shoes complement, completed the outfit. Want to show it off, Gary? <laughs> Swing your chain. <laughs> they would often wear a long, straight pheasant feather in the hat. My outfit is very typical of the late 40s. It's a red synthetic crepe in uh, black with a peplum and a belt that fastens in the back. My hat is a wide brim straw, which was popular at that time. My shoes are fabric, vintage. And my handbag is black satin, but on the top it's embroidered with very delicate Chinese embroidery. Red and black was a very popular color combination, which you will no doubt see tonight. <laughs> I'm also wearing nylon seamed stockings. First, first go. 
Gracias. This is Kendra. She is wearing a post-war beige gabardine suit. Like many expensive suits of this era, decorations were added to make it outstanding. In this case, there is a cluster of chains on the right side of the jacket and added flaps of fabric just as supposed on both opposite sides of the jacket and cuffs lined in the brown fabric at the sleeves. It has covered buttons in sets of three held by bound buttonholes. This is a feature rarely found on clothing these days as it is a time-consuming effort. Her hat is a very fashionable creation in brown felt. The felt details on the brim would have involved individual handling, not mass-produced. She wears brown suede shoes I'm sorry, uh, brown suede gloves and carries a lovely brown lizard handbag. As I said, lizard was often used instead of leather. Kendra, would you like to parade? Go down. This is the first year Kendra has uh, modeled for me. You know, with the shortage of fabric in England, in my small town, a woman managed to get hold of some uh, chalk stripe serge material, and she could make her husband a pair of, sh of sh pants out of it. And she got a paper pattern, and she did okay, she got it cut out. But unfortunately, instead of the stripes going down, there were circles going around the legs. This is Julie. Julie must be off to meet her friends for an afternoon of shopping. No woman ever went out without dressing up. A hat and gloves were always worn, and everything would be color coordinated. She looks perfectly dressed in a long sleeved black and red crepe dress. The red draping at the neckline is complemented by the red pleating of draping below the, down the front of the dress. There's a band of black fabric between the waist and the hips. This forms into a belt which fastens in the back with a large metal buckle. The broad brimmed hat of red straw picks up the red in the dress. It is trimmed with a red velvet ribbon ending in a stylized bow with two pearl hat pins holding it in place. She is carrying a fashionable black handbag in a clutch style. With a large, um, no, she has added a black bead and cinema bangle to coordinate with her dress. Here is lovely Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca has a remarkable collection of clothes of her own, and this is one of her own dresses. She steps out for a springtime luncheon with the Mercy Hospital Guild, wearing a navy print rayon dress. The gay print is of stylized blooms of red, yellow, and white. It features a peplum, the short overskirt which has a hallmark of the 1940s. She wears a red straw tilt hat, so named because it's best displayed its abundant charm when tilted far forward or over the right eye. This hat is trimmed with dyed and curled feathers in front and a red velvet ribbon in back. She carries a red imitation alligator purse and wears classic red Mary Jane shoes. This is 
Lila. Lila is wearing another stylish gabardine suit. This time it is in a rich maroon color. It too has bound buttonholes. Crisscross straps of the same fabric are used to add an interest detail, not found in, in a less expensive suit. Buttons are added to the flaps to add further interest. It has side slit pockets. And most suits of this time had pockets. Sometimes they were stitched when you bought it, and some people never understood you could undo the stitching and have a pocket. Lila has added an attractive gold stylized flower to the jacket. The skirt is straight, which was typical of the suits of that era. And she has left her jacket unbuttoned to show off her white knit blouse. It has a plain neckline and cap sleeves with delicate beadwork on the front, creating a decorative design. Her cream colored hat, called a baby doll because of its small size, was very popular and trendy. It has a small crown and an upturned brim. A broad grow grain ribbon surrounds the crown and is studded with metal stars in red, green, and gold with a gold bead, bead in each center. The grow grain ribbon falls down at the back of the hat. Hat makers strive to have interest in all views of their hat. She has chosen a cream and beige lizard skin handbag in a smart rectangular design. Her cream Kid gloves have a French label. She completes her outfit with open toe strappy cream shoes. Thank you, Lila. This is Bobby. Bobby steps out in a green wool swing back coat by Lily Ann from Paris. In the 40s, swing back coats got their name because of the extra fabric that went into them. This one has raglan sleeves and angled pockets. It fastens with one large covered button and of course, it has a bound buttonhole. Under this, she is wearing a multicolored dress in a synthetic knit fabric. It has a fabric camel between the waist and the hips, and then the dress fabric falls into unpressed pleats down the front to give it fullness and ease of movement. Sequins in plum and red fill in the pattern on the dress at the left front. Again, this would have involved hand detailing. Again, too expensive for today's garment trade. Her black felt hat ha has a brim with folds back on itself and is finished in shirt stitching. A black bow adds interest to the back of the hat. She carries a black suede boxy handbag, typical of the late 40s, and she coordinates the handbag with her black suede shoes. They have peep toes, ankle straps, and higher heels. She has chosen black kid leather gloves with the longer cuff popular in this era. She has chosen a checkmate necklace of large green beads in a gold metal setting. and his band playing Flying Home. <laughs> this is Francis. <laughs> Francis is wearing an aqua cotton dress which buttons down the front. The highlight of the dress are the black and aqua buttons with the raised design. The 
top crosses over the bodice of the dress and is held in place by four of these buttons. It has a self belt that fastens in the front and ends with a bow. It has cap sleeves and detailed stitching adds a lot of interest to this casual but lovely dress. Her hat is a wide brimmed black felt with a scalloped edging hanging down around the brim. The crown is surrounded by black grow grain ribbon decorated with gold thread and glass beads. Frances carries a black lucite oval box purse with a rigid gold handle and gold metal fastenings. These handbags, these handbags have become very collectible and bring high prices. To complete her stylish look, she wears black cotton gloves. Thank you, Francis. This is Olivia. We have a change of pace as we try to introduce the full gamut of items popular in the 40s. Here is Olivia wearing a printed cotton bathing or sunsuit. It is worn under a button-down matching skirt. The sides of the swimsuit are shirred to provide a good fit. It also has boning down each side. There are nylon knit panties sewn into the inside of the suit. The shoulder straps have several buttonhole options to choose from. The skirt has a broad piece of elastic ensuring at the waistline, again to guarantee a great fit. It fastens with buttons and snaps. The label... <laughs> the label shows it as a coal of California creation. She carries a woven straw handbag with a leather flap to hold her sunscreen and comb. Her white crocheted... Oh, forget the hat. I saw you men perk up. <laughs> this is Laura. Laura brings us another example of leisure wear in this one-piece swimsuit made by C. Lure of California. The label says it's a size 14, which shows how much sizes have been manipulated. It has a lovely pink and red floral design on a white figured cotton background. Pink piping gives the swimsuit a long, slim look. Not that Laura needs it. The bust has boning and the straps are adjustable. Shearing around the top and legs assures a good fit. Her hat is an adorable creation in raffia and red velvet ribbons. A headband covered in red velvet is stitched under the crown of the hat to hold it in place on the head. Thank you, Laura. This is Mitre. Here is another version of leisure wear. Mitre is wearing a white, one-piece outfit in a synthetic fabric. This could be worn for a game of tennis or for just lounging around. It has one patch pocket at the top left side and one at the bottom right side. The skirt is held together by buttons down the left side. The front pleating gives it the look of a skirt but in reality, it is shorts. 
Maita adds a straw coolie hat, made popular at this time, and she completes her outfit with a terrific rectangular straw handbag with a domed top. That concludes our daytime wear. We'll be moving into evening wear now. Cocktail dresses were popular at that time. Um, people wanted something that was, people wanted to look dressy without the formal look. Kendra is ready for an evening out on the town. Maybe she's going to a nightclub for dinner, dancing, or maybe to the opera. Whichever it is, she will get a lot of admiration in this yellow rayon taffeta evening dress. The outstanding attraction of this lovely dress is its very full skirt. It has a gathered drop sleeves and shoulder straps holding the dress up. The front is embellished with gold sequins forming a design. It is repeated on the back of the dress because she wants to look good from the back too when dancing or walking away. The same fabric forms a bow on the bodice of the dress. It fastens with a zip on the left side, which was of course typical. She has a yellow snakeskin bangle on her wrist. Her earrings have yellowish beads and rhinestones. And Kendra has added a gold chain necklace and carries a gold metal compact purse. These were very popular because they contained everything you needed, and yet you could still wear it when dancing. This one has a raised stylized pattern of a metal flower made up of pearls and rhinestones. One side opens up to reveal a powder compact, a lipstick, and a mirror. The other side opens up and has a compartment for cigarettes and money. to introduce Amanda. Amanda looks glamorous in her long, form-fitting dress. It is made of red rayon crepe with a, with a beautiful decoration applied to the front of the dress of gold thread and rhinestone beads. The long sleeves have three co covered buttons at the wrist. The skirt has stitched pleats at the waist, which cascade freely down to the hem. It is the last word in elegance. She's wearing a gold thread, soft fabric hat decorated with colored rhinestones, which complement the dress. To make sure she's going to stay warm, she has added two matching brown foxes over her shoulders. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Isn't she lovely? Amanda arranged for a team of beauticians to help our models look like they were from the 40s. They were doing their hair and their makeup, and I want to thank them. That was a nice gesture on their part. Thank you, Amanda. This is Julie again. Julia is wearing a lovely blue cocktail dress. It has a high neckline, 
padded shoulders and cap sleeves. The front of the dress is decorated with a beautiful design of silver and gold beads. These would have been applied by hand, almost a lost art these days. A peplum at the waist dips gracefully down the back of the dress, halfway to the hem. She's wearing... Oh. <laughs> She's wearing a headband. <laughs> She carries a black velvet evening handbag, decorated in uh, s silver metal. It was embroidered in India with what is called Zardosi work in silver. She's wearing silver shoes, yeah, <laughs> and a peep toe and ankle straps. White fabric gloves completes her elegant outfit. Here is Rebecca. She's ready for cocktails and dinner in a long-sleeved hostess gown. The hostess gown, designed for informal at-home entertainment with its easy entry zipper, began to make its way out of the on the town with the war and women's need to stretch their fashion dollars as far as possible. There's plenty of glamour to go around here, though. It has uh, dramatic rust panels, adding contrast to the black and shearing for movement ease. In case her shoulder, soldier boy date can't afford a corsage, Rebecca adds a Bakelite rose. She wears a Lily Darche turban trimmed with chenille pom-poms. She also wears a double silver fox fur piece. She has rayon gloves and a small white beaded clutch. Silver sandals complete the ensemble. Here's Lila again. Lila looks fabulous in her blue and red shot rayon fabric dress. It has cap sleeves and a V-shaped opening at the neckline. The bodice is close fitting and the skirt is very full. The effect of this fabric is brought about by having a red warp and a blue weft, giving it this special iridescence. Her beautiful fur stole is made of white silver fox and fastens with a hook and eye at the front to keep it in place. She complements the dress with a strand of blue crystal beads. Her evening purse was made in Japan of Italian beads. Her black peep toe shoes have a crisscross ankle straps and since hats were not usually worn with evening dresses, she has added an artificial pink flower to her hair. Thank you, Lana.
This is Frances. She's wearing a beautiful three-quarter length mink coat, which is a good length for an evening dress. Under this, she wears a gorgeous long black crepe evening dress. It has a sweetheart neckline outlined in a design of gold thread and gold studs. This design is repeated around the slit in the front of the dress and along the hemline. The long sleeves end in a small zipper. The dress is very form-fitting, but flares out towards the hemline, giving it a graceful flow. Its glamour comes from its elegance and simplicity. Her designer necklace is made of imitation pearls and rhinestones. Her black velvet purse is embroidered in white and silver beading. Her hat is a lovely felt creation with veiling weighted down by ribbon and two beautiful ornaments at the back. Again, you had to look good for the, from the back as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Francis. This is Olivia again. Olivia is wearing an original Christine Dior cocktail dress. The deep blue fabric is hard to describe. It is so unusual. It has a cowl collar, separate and yet attached, over the neckline and falling away from the dress. It ends in a bow at the front of the bodice. The top is close-fitting, and the skirt has pleats at the waistline and then falling loose to the hem. It is fully lined in silk. With it, Olivia wears a strand of pearls, which complements the dress, and has a bangle of beads and pearls. Her white beaded purse has a large rhinestone clasp. She wears white peep-toe leather shoes, and a white crocheted headband adds interest to her hair. And of course, her white fabric gl gloves completes her ensemble. Thank you, Olivia. Laura looks spectacular in this stunning long red crepe, red crepe dress. It has a cleverly formed sweetheart neckline. The sleeves are three quarter length, ending in a small gather. The skirt has a detail on the right side with a separate cascade of fabric falling from under a self fabric flap. The belt is also of the same fabric as the dress and ends in a covered buckle. Laura is wearing a beautiful three-skin mink stole over her dress. <clears throat> uh, 
a fabric band goes... Um, Laura has added a three-strand necklace of crystals to adorn the neckline. Her black leather shoes has cutouts typical of the 40s. She is carrying a compact purse of mother of pearl. It can be taken out of its black grosgrain case and carried by its own handle. This one opens up to reveal a powder compact, a place for lipstick, a comb, and a mirror. The other compartment is for cigarettes. Thank you, Laura. This is Mitre. Mitre is wearing a luxurious gray fox stole. Her dress is a long white creation. It has a self-fabric insert between the bust and the waistline. An attached peplum has a lacy edging of fabric which also surrounds the sweetheart neckline and at the end of the sleeves. The sleeves are fastened with four snaps. Mita decorates her dress by adding a brooch, necklace, and earrings of carved coral. Her evening purse is covered in rhinestones. The shoes are white with navy trim and have peep toes. She complements her white dress with a white fabric bow in her hair. Thank you, Maisa. Bob's outfit is an example of the casual evening wear which became fashionable in the 40s. It was acceptable wear in which to host an affair or attend one. Bob's is especially charming with its orange and silk brocade jacket, piped in black, and matching black satin wide-legged lounging pants. Like many women, she smokes. and holds her cigarette in a fashionable long holder. By the looks of her champagne glass, she is obviously having a very good time. <laughs> well, this concludes our fashion show of the 40s. I want to thank you all for coming and thank the Central Library for putting on these educational events. If you remember the 40s, let me congratulate you on having a long life. I remember them. If you didn't, I hope it gave you some idea of what was fashionable back then. I'd like to thank our models. Without them, we wouldn't have had this fashion show. They're such troopers and they're so willing and so easy to get along with. I, I just can't thank them enough. And thank you all for coming. Um, and I'd like to thank Doreen for this lovely show and for bringing the collections here.
we'll all be sticking around a little bit, so if you have any questions to ask of Doreen, I'm sure she'll be around. Um, and then also next week is Motion Pictures. We will be bringing out an actual film projector, and we will be showing some great clips and films from the 1940s and talking about Sacramento movie going in the 1940s, so I encourage you to come to that. Um, and thank you again for coming tonight.